So for those of you who have seen the Stormblade video, you probably already know what this is going to be about. You're no doubt seeing gameplay of enemies just getting annihilated by the Stormblade right now. And I have decided to take that build and repurpose it for the Husk Stomper. Now, the Husk Stomper is probably an unsuspecting weapon to pick. It's just a hardware, right? What, what is so special about this? Obviously, you could tell that it has the critical hits cause an explosion perk, which makes pretty much any melee that gets it just 10 times better. So I decided to apply the same things that we did before we just got double attack speed damage perk easy peasy damage miss monsters of bosses there aren't really that many options down here this does stagger enemies but it's not often enough water because we'll be in a fire mission today and the build is almost exactly the same the difference is instead of white out fiona we're using guardian bowl which has a crit rating bonus of 50 and i think that's actually more than white out fiona which is 45 so we'll be critting slightly more often totally rocking out of course battle beat and fumble just so that we can you know get our bonus active for melee kills nice and easy it could be considered to use Power Pop Penny, but we're really not going to be using Heavy Attack Eliminations. I can't show this without my overlay covering it. It's not going to be a big deal. Saurian Claws is what I went for just because our health is generally pretty high, and she's always a good pick. This is kind of an alternate, so if you want to change this for something else, there are a lot of ninjas in the game that could work. I mean, you could use Assassin Sarah or whatever. It doesn't super matter, but I went for her. I'm going to use Assassin Sarah, actually. Uh, I used her in my best ninja loadout video. Link to that down below, and she kind of impressed, so in support, just flat buff to my damage could be pretty good, and that's all melee weapons then of course we got actuated attacks because if we're going to have hardware crit rating in the lead we want hardware damage and support these are the only two heroes that directly buff hardware by the way and monster smash is critical and one of the reasons i'm making this video when i am because arlene Izo's quest is available today uh, it's been available for a little while now so if you check out the yearly timeline flashbang warning for some of you you can actually see when arlene Izo is available and as of right now as a recording you go to your main quests and click over to the matchmaker quest line you can get arlene Izo, and she is extremely important in this build i'm not just shoehorning her into this just to make sure that she's featured because she's the hero available no honestly the life leech from this is extremely important because it works in a couple of ways first it can heal you up to 15 percent based on your missing health but the way that life leech works from eyeballing it and just my experience using her in the support in luna builds attack speed builds damage focus builds it does actually heal you based off of how much damage you're doing so as long as i have enemies around me and so long as i am hitting them with those crit explosions i will be healed almost to full you basically can't die with this build so yeah with all that said let's hop in game and just show you how strong this weapon can be all right let's see how good this weapon can be oh shoot i got a daily going on all right got a nurse and she's dead oh we got a crowd of enemies and they're gone oh, we got another little baby and it's dead got another round of enemies they're gone another nurse surviving the heat what is going on here oh she's hiding she's running from me Oh, you know it's a good game when the nurse is running from you. Oh, she's, she's probably more interested in the, in the dino. Yeah, one of the drawbacks running a constructor is uh, chasing enemies down isn't so easy. You can't do that double jump. And the, uh, the oh, I can't think of the name. Shadow Stance from Ninjas actually gives you that movement speed. Super useful for taking out crowds of enemies. But, woo, if I could actually hit the target, look at that damage. Okay, everything's going behind. But, oof, so good. All right, so, ah, <laughs> This weapon does have a bit of a drawback. This build in general is highly dependent on totally rocking out and the booms taking place. So single target damage is not that impressive. However, you can see that while I'm not usually an impact fan, you can see that the impact on this weapon is doing pretty dang well. And knocking an enemy around like that is exactly a great way to deal with higher health targets that might not go down to a single boom. So while this weapon really thrives off of crowd clearing, those single targets uh, might need a little bit of that impact damage. So this is where the build gets a little tough we got a lot of beehives on me i'd be surprised if i survived this and it can be really really tough to get it going you need those booms to sustain you and when you got this many targets grouped up on top of you it can be pretty impossible to survive but i'm gonna try it again anyway so instead of going straight for it i'm gonna try and group the enemies up we're gonna let the blasters not kill me so easily let the enemies come to me and this is when this build can really thrive those booms just do so much good damage and again single target you know it has a little bit of a struggle but if you play a little smart you can take care of these super easy barely an inconvenience and those booms with arlene Iza and support oh man you'll never die as long as you play a little wise you know nothing to it nothing to it look at that we got a nice crowd of enemies i uh broke open the wall of the deatomizer got a football and yeah every, everything everything's dead that's uh that's about how that goes yeah oh we got another smasher and his minions let's see how we can deal with this maybe we'll get a football oh, and we can get fumble active if we can get totally rocking out active then we'll be going for it all right no totally rocking out but oh, oh, oh we're gonna struggle we're gonna struggle 
I can't say enough times that single target damage is not this build strong suit. Honestly, though, if there's a crowd of enemies around me, it makes it significantly easier to take care of the Smasher. But I guess some height differences is all we needed to make it super easy again. Cool. Well, I'm going to head over to the defense and uh, let's get things going. You know, as much as I complain about this being a constructor build and not, you know, the benefits of a ninja, you do actually get a base, which is just going to apply 40 armor to all the walls and just make things better overall. So you can kind of have your base covered, your defense covered while you're off taking care of the enemies. And look at these natural choke points. Oh, it's beautiful. The enemies can only come up that corner over there. And while this area right here is beautiful too, you just kill them easy, like just like that. And then this... This is the area that I don't want my teammates to help me on. This is beautiful. Look at the damage. Everything coming to one spot. Okay, there's a beehive on me, and that is something I need to be cognizant of because that is definitely the bane of this thing's existence. Beehives are super OP, and uh, I'm going to need some teammate help here. Now that we're back in the fight, this is it. Look at it. Look at them all coming up this hill. This is just gorgeous. This is exactly what this build was made for. I don't want to stand in the beehive, so I'm going to step back a little bit. Uh, I'm going to put down even one campfire just to have a little bit of healing. And uh, there are slowing pools, which is not that great. It means that I can't really get around the map as easy, but as long as I can get some booms here, I should be back up to full health. Yeah, plus a little bit of campfire in the background. Oh, look at it. Look at it. I can't do everything. I just I want to, though. I want to. I might... Here, 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 here. We're going to do it just like this. Yeah. We're going to funnel them all to this corner here. If I can get them all in one spot, that would be perfect. I'm almost going to regret putting down so many floor freeze, but I think it's going to be fine. Look at this damage. Look at this damage. Oh, my goodness. This is so fun. This is exactly what this build was made to do. This is so great. If you can get a natural choke point like this, or if you can funnel the enemies accordingly... You're, you're basically invincible. I mean, look at this. With enough enemies in front of you, you simply cannot die. It's it's awesome. Like, obviously, as shown, you definitely can die, but this, this is when the build can really, really, really shine. Oh, man. This is one of the most satisfying moments I've had in a while. Okay, I'm going to back off because propanes are a little much, a little much. You got to ease up a bit, but... There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Is ease up a pun? Because Iza makes you heal? Okay, no, that's that's terrible. I'm sorry. You guys didn't need that. I'm sorry. Uh, bl believe it or not, by the way, we started this with almost no traps. Um, because of these funneling areas here, I am personally locking down, like, two-thirds of our kills. And this is just how strong this loadout can be. There are no ceiling traps above me. There are no wall traps helping out. I am doing all this damage with a husk stomper and a great loadout. Look at this. I know that uh, we got... Is that a defender? Oh, come on. Archer's trolling me. He knows I'm trying to get a gameplay for a video and he's putting defenders down. It's fine, though. It's not going to do as much damage as a, a sniper defender probably would, but it's going to allow me to get what I need. And he can't shoot through walls, so as long as I'm over here, this is all me. All the weapon that I'm trying to showcase, and it's it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. One hit just turns into five kills because of that explosion. <laughs> this is like Fortnite ASMR. This is just... This is just destruction at its finest. Oh, man. If it was acid pools, it would probably be a different story. I'm even running out into the storm right now, and as long as there's a target, yeah, you can't die. But you can see I got a couple of unlucky swings there. Didn't quite boom. Didn't get the kills I needed to stay alive, and uh, that's when the build fails. But we got a teammate bringing us back into the action, and everything just dies. Yeah. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa, whoa. Don't want to be falling off the map. <laughs> Look at this. Also, when you hit multiple enemies, they all have separate opportunities to crit. So if you can swing across four or five targets at once, you might crit uh, multiple times or you have a higher chance to crit. So like I keep saying, the more enemies, the better. Oh, these single targets. A little bit tough, but if you have multiple enemies in your same swing, you might crit more often. And that's why, uh, believe it or not, two smashers or even two flingers at once is easier to take care of than a uh, normal single target. So because it's just one smasher, I'm going to kind of run away. I'll let him come up here and we can work on everything kind of together. I am getting a little bit of bugginess because these guys are frozen, but if we can get that smasher, here we go, surrounded by a few enemies, we'll have a much easier time with this build, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. Look at that. Oh, all those crits, just stunned him in place. He's frozen by the floor freeze, and it's taken care of like there was never a smasher there. Just a bit more health, that's all we had to take care of. I'm gonna drop another campfire just so I can stay alive. 
Oh my goodness, these builds are just so fun. I'm not gonna claim like this is any better than the Stormblade. I do believe the Stormblade is a is a better option for this, but if there are some hardware weapons like the Huff Stomper that you just haven't, you know, blown the dust off in a while, this build is uh, definitely a fun way to switch things up. That's kind of what this series is about, is to use a loadout that is different from the norm. You know, put away your Xenon bows, put away your mythic weapons, and pull out the Husk Stomper, a base game hardware that I doubt an average player who's never seen my videos before has ever thought twice about, and throw on this perk loadout with this build, and you'll be having a grand old time, and uh, surprising yourself with just how much damage and fun you can have from such a basic weapon like this. And I've done the same thing with like the Fortsville Slugger as well. Super basic club. It's a weapon that most players just recycle. That's what I did for years, but you give it crit explosion and the right loadout and you'll have a great time. Unless of course you get killed by uh, exploding death bomb. A uh, little, little, little propane situation never uh, never helps. Matteo would rather just watch me die than help me with the mini boss, but that's okay. I don't think he wants to run into a crowd of enemies in a mini boss and I don't think I'm gonna be able to help much on this thing. As I've mentioned, wait, too many times now i'm not gonna be able to help much on that mini boss as long as there are enemies around it it's kind of good but the dps of this weapon is tricky where its damage output isn't the highest in the game right but it does just enough to like one or two shot these basic enemies so it's extremely good for crowd clearing but against the mini boss i'm gonna have to defer to my teammates to help me out there because i am not gonna be any help at all I'm gonna go back over here actually, and I don't wanna waste too many traps this close to the end of the mission, but I think a couple of floor freeze just to repair what I had going on here is uh, gonna be a nice way to group up my enemies. Look at that. Freeze them in place, let them boom on the smasher. Oh man. Okay, there are some beehives on the ground. It's gonna be hard to stay alive, and I broke a husk stomper. I actually recorded a gameplay before this that I, I think I'm gonna scrap. And uh, I also broke a Hus Stomper in that. So this thing does use quite a bit of durability. Uh, it's not something that's going to make it through an entire mission like this, but yeah, it's just something to look out for. Just going to go ahead and craft another copy. I want to have multiple elements of this weapon. Uh, I only have this weapon and a fire version that I have crafted so far. I don't have enough Husk Stompers, believe it or not, to have more than one copy of this. I don't even have purple ones. I have one singular copy of the Hust Stomper in my entire inventory, which actually surprised me. I figured that's the kind of weapon I would save, knowing the Chris Explosions makes it good, but I guess in my old experience, the Chris Explosion didn't save this weapon to make it super viable, but obviously I just wasn't using it right, and now I want to get a copy of every element for this weapon, just so I can <laughs> do exactly this more often, because having one of these for every element would be super fun. Uh, this is obviously a water copy for a fire mission, but you'd want to Fire one and a nature one, energy if you want to be lazy, and uh, realistically, with the damage healing you, you don't want to be messing around with energy. I think using the right element in the right zone would be would be ideal. And I guess if there's somebody watching who doesn't know their elements, you want a nature one and a water zone. I got a whole video on the elements, link to that down below. If you guys want any resources, I got videos on pretty much everything, and I don't want to mess with those nurses. Oh, what the hell did those hit? What? Why, why did it explode in the middle of the air? Coach! Natural choke point? Can you actually build your own choke points? Of course! Yeah, so this one's a natural choke point, but there's a bunch of spawns down here and one ramp. We got really lucky, but even if this was a wide open field, you just put up walls. Uh, two or three walls in a row with one in the middle. They'll all go to the one spot, just like over here. They're avoiding all these walls, and uh, yeah. Building a weapon like this is very similar to like the, the the cloud burst, where if you can funnel them appropriately, you can have a great time. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're just going to do one round in this video. I don't think there's much need to do an entire second mission. I've said everything I need to, so it's a bit of a shorter video than normal, but I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one, and uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> and then...